One, two, three. Dick. Dick. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Pro and On cast, the only podcast that's a podcast. Uh, I'm Dune Kuhn. I'm hosting the show now because no one else fucking said anything. <laughs> I'm here with no need, bro. Uh, it's a f- Sean, edit that out. Uh, we'll see you with Simon. Patreon.com slash Simon. <laughs> Next person. Hey, Sean John. Here's how Bernie can still win, guys. He can still do it. Zach Dead. Yeah. <laughs> that's nope, not who that's it not is, it. dude. Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> Psych. That's not who it is. Zach Death 4. No. Rito Torpedo. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm wasting away. I I feel the sands of time passing through me. Fantastic. Also, could draw a bit of thorn. Angelic reinforcement. Angelic reinforcement. I hear the sounds of the pouring of rain. I hear the sound of victory. I <laughs> in the corners of heaven. Shout out to her. Shout out to that lady. What's her name, Kajura? Paula White. Paula uh, White. Paula White harnessing the power of the four horsemen of the apocalypse: God, Christ, uh, uh, Zionism, and melanin all together. In, yeah, in order to to reelect Donald J. Trump. Indeed. And it worked. We gotta link win. that. We gotta link that video now. Yeah, oh, we it's did. In the, it's already. It's in the in the oh, you already. Look at you. You're smart, Kachara. Oh yeah. I was Indian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same thing. Okay. So, guys, you ever wonder why we're here? Often, just to suffer. So Every you, day, I you think see about Dune. When a PS2 man, when a X. man and a woman. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. When a penis haver and a vagina haver. <laughs> Smush. Are yeah, you yeah. not gonna finish it? <laughs> it can it can be a man and a woman. I don't know why it doesn't have to be a man. doesn't know and what happens after that. He just uh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, Simon, you you, Simon, you're not considering all the other possibilities out there. Well, I mean, I I don't think that's implicit to the anyway. <laughs> no, no, you are. <laughs> <laughs> all right, can you get good guys, good, good podcast guys? Yeah, good this. podcast. Let's wrap it up. Hey, fucking Sean. Yeah. You had we. I mean, you said something before we started recording that I was very interested in talking about. <laughs> yeah, which is <clears throat> so, ladies and gentlemen, I am interested in getting a PS Five. Let's okay. no <laughs> yikers. Now tell us why, <laughs> Sean. But no, the reasoning no. <laughs> is based. I want to get tell a PS Five so I can link up with all my old friends who are all Trumpers, and I can rub it in their fucking faces. That's the Just reasoning, that. baby. Oh wow. Uh, oh. Oh, wait, no. wait. So you oh, want no. a f- you want a five hundred dollar gloat? Even I wouldn't do that. The, the fundamentals. I'm actually not sure. I, I think actually... just not owning a PS5 would be enough to gloat in their faces. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Unsure. I'm say, probably not. I will say, um, everybody on the internet who's like, "Oh, dude, I'm so excited for this new next console generation, dude! Aren't you excited to fucking have a a, a full t- motion ray tracing?" Uh, um, I don't respect you if you're like that. You should not buy a PS5. It looks like not only is it a massive piece of fucking junk. It's like three or four times higher than like a switch standing up in a fucking dock. It's massive. It also uh, looks like a vagina that you have on your table. <laughs> um, but they like, it's like vaginas, a vagina. It's like a Georgia Simon. O'Keeffe it's painting, but in console you know, I, form. I, I, I didn't know about. I don't know about the PS5, but like my friend uh, brought over her PS4 and they played it. Like I was shocked at how loud the PS4 is. Like how does no the PS4 yeah, is I, loud? I, I, I mention this all the fucking screamer. time, and everyone's like, "It's not that loud. It's not that." Like, Never. dude, it's a terribly. It's like a it physically uh, both both that and the Xbox are physically nightmares. Like the PS5 uh, is gonna sell like a fucking like portable gas like generator. A hot cake. Like fuck. <laughs> Well, I know, I think because the newer ones are, are water cooled, like the Xbox One X, and I don't know about the, I assume the Series X is like this as well, maybe mm-hmm. not, but I know the One X is water cooled, and I would okay. assume, I mean, maybe not, I don't know, maybe the Sony's not I leaning that it. angle. You know, I, no, I, I listened to a, everybody call me the fuck out, but a game, gaming journalism podcast, everybody sue me, um, and Disgusting. they have their hands on PS5s, and they say those motherfuckers are loud, duh. Oh, like, fucking... Man. 
Well, that's like, why you just need to buy the PS5 well, Pro. They probably oh. have to turn the fan clock speed up to compensate for like how they have the like all the parts tuned. Sure. All the polygons. Sure. Yeah. For all those graphics on level three. I mean, 64 the bits. real problem is that fucking console people are fucking impossible to convince to make their own PCs. That's the problem. Oh, yeah. Well, Wait, they're, what about Sean? They're, well, they're impossible to convince that like there are other things good in gaming aside from looking pretty. Oh yeah, like look at looking like real life. Well, I don't know if PC gamers are they. Uh, I mean, PC a lot of PC gamers are like that too, but you know they're <laughs> that they're willing I to mean, shell out I, the big. I bucks. mean, I'm looking at my Steam page right now. Like, all my games are like indie games. Like, like most yeah. all of them are indie games with fucking simplistic, either pixelated or cartoony graphics. They're all like some of the best games I've ever fucking played. Like you don't. What like I what. When you play with the fucking console, right? Like, what is coming out on the consoles that is different? Uh, uh, oh, oh, I'll different tell you what's coming out, else. Simon. It's uh, it's game with a uh, strong female protagonist who wields a bow and has red hair. Number eighty nine. <laughs> what you know? K- Kajora, that's really Kajora, you know. Kajora, so, name three games that do that. Uh, the la- <laughs> the Last of Us, Horizon Zero Dawn, and that Tomb other Raider. Tomb Raider. Yeah, yeah, th- it? there it is. Oh, I did it. What is it? Wait, Tomb Raider. It? She doesn't oh. have red hair. Red hair? Oh, was that no, a prerequisite? No, but okay, Brown but hair. no, I do, I do want to speak on this. The strong female character, specifically like with a bow. I'm That's very fucking int- Hunger Games fault. No, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, right? like, it kind I, of is. I, there's, there's something. So, I don't know. I feel like that trope kind of existed. Before that is a Sony Hunger thing. Games, even it's because, because women can't hold swords. It, right, right. Like, like I feel like this is where it stems <laughs> from. Is that like, oh, women can't hold a fucking sword? We need but, like a smart weapon because they're but, so like, fucking I've, weak. As a, as a child, I like kind of subconsciously held that conception in my mind. Like, oh well, the the guy has the sword and the girl has the bow. And I don't know where that came from, if that's like a societal no, thing or what. No, it's or physical the, predispositions. No, it's because every like, fantasy thing has like a hot archer babe. I, yes, I know, yes. No, you're right. I, I wonder where that trope okay. originates from. Like, I've no, always been interested. No, it comes from the fact that women can't hold big medieval swords. Well, not they can't, the, the perception, you know. Well, I mean, I, I I think in some cases, like, phys- I mean, isn't it physically easier for men to build the muscle required to... Yeah, like, but like I in mean, a fantasy story, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, exactly, I, I, exactly, yeah. yeah. But like, the sexism in the, you know, the sexism I, I, in the, precisely, in the fantasy precisely. book industry. I honestly oh, you know what think it is? the person who came up with this idea wasn't like, oh, what makes the most sense? It was like, oh, the dude has the cool sword, and I guess the, the girl will get a bow. I'm pretty sure that was yeah. the original. Yeah, probably that. It's from probably Disney. That. You guys Disney. know that? Oh, that you know movie? what it is? Bird she can't. Bird. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, my God. That's that's a, no, know, Kajura, there's that. another one. The, the girl from Brave. Yeah. Not a video game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, they probably made a Brave video game, right? They definitely did. Yeah. They did. Yeah, like a, ta- like a fucking like, 3DS tie-in game. My PC can do it. Oh, my God. It. Do you guys remember <laughs> the Incredibles game on the PC? Rise you play Rise. Yes. Rise. Yes. Dude, oh, that was I, so good. I I played that game. I had oh, that yeah, on Xbox. It's, it's like you, you're Mister Incredible and Frozone. Wow. Yes, yeah. that was that was a fun game because you could play it co-op. Uh, yeah, that was, yeah. A, that was a good one. It was so fun, and I would play Frozone <laughs> like ninety percent of the time. Like if I was playing, yeah, by he was myself, just the better character. Yeah, he has such uh, cool moves. I don't like the forced diversity. <laughs> <laughs> before we do that, before we do the classic left turn and move on from the subject. It, uh, fucking Sean, don't buy a PS5 until yet, next I year. Yeah, yeah, I know. Please I, fucking I, wait. I won't Please get wait. it right away. There's there's hardly a reason to fucking do it, honestly. Exactly. Ex- right I mean, like, Demon Souls, but, like, you can play Demon Souls on a fucking, like, yeah, you no. can burn Demon Souls on a fucking piece of fucking cardboard. No, that is literally not true, actually. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, Demon Souls. Well, well, Demon Souls is poorly optimized, even for the PS3. Like, yes. it just chugs mm-hmm. and crashes so hard. I that's the reason why I have, I never completed Demon Souls one because I didn't own a PS3, and the PS3 I played it on just could not like could you not know, cope okay. with Demon Souls. I always Souls. forget that's not a PS2 game. That's where what? my okay. Yeah. Yes. I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, the PS3 was kind of bad. So I haven't played it. it. The thing that really bugs me 
about console people is that they yeah. are they're in that Goldilocks zone of like they're like they're like spec minded enough to be a fucking consumer and be like oh yeah. my god the new ones come out with the the bigger better graphics and the and the this and the that but they won't figure out a PC or get right. like a gaming laptop or something like yeah. that but the yeah. I, I think mean, gaming laptops are kind of a trap. Like they, they yeah, sort of are. Um, it, it's it's like it's kind but. of like a big investment because they have to make specific parts that are a little more expensive to cram in in the laptop, it's true, and it's true. and you can't upgrade it. So you're you're kind of tra- it's basically like a more expensive console with PC functionalities, which is better than a console, I think. It but has like, more longevity than a console. Y- yeah, yeah. It's it's Fucking just a uh, yeah. It's yeah, poor, like, yeah, it's poor. It I mean, it's got. I think yeah. I think it's got better functionality. Up. Like it's just, uh, you know, it doesn't come with all the good parts of being a PC. Like even if something breaks, like it's really expensive to replace it too because laptop true. parts. Uh, oh, wait, but aren't they like misguided? Like if I want to play like a PC, like high end PC level game, why would they like play it in a train or a bus or whatever? I'm probably gonna be in home. Sure. I mean, I think. Yeah. I mean, like, it's I've. Like playing uh cool games on like a laptop on like a on like an airplane or something like if uh I don't know for like what's a, what's like a I mean, AAA I could game do right that, now? Great but, uh, example. Civ. I mean, if you're playing Civ a game, a- oh yeah, that'd be a great game for like a fucking plane ride. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I yeah I think a gaming laptop can be yeah something that I mean, but if you're playing a game with a gaming laptop with like you know. At like sixty FPS and stuff, like you would need the, you need the charger plugged in, so right, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, it fucking drain in like half an hour. Of course, Eliezer is not here. Who's the one person with a laptop who could tell us how it is? Uh, yeah. I have one. Well, oh, Eliezer has made. like one oh. of those like tiny ass modules, right? Like the yeah, it's not even like a fucking computer. It's like a box. It's like a Raspberry Pi, right? oh, basically. Okay. Yeah. What? It, it, it's yeah. like a beefier Raspberry Pi. Okay. The kind, the kind of thing like, like that they mini. use in like uh, factories and stuff that they hook up to monitor. It's like a bot. It's like um. Oh right right right. You know, it, it, it's like the size. It's like two Roku TV boxes or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I mean, fuck you, Elias. Are you poor? <laughs> in defense of the console people. I think most people aim for the exclusives. I think that's the biggest selling point. No, that's no, the biggest. Co- that's the that's that's the biggest cope yeah. is the exclusives. When the exclusives on either console, uh, granted they have you know their their differences. Um, I mean Xbox has minimal none. Con- has yeah, it, zero. It has it has none that most people really want to play. I mean that don't yeah. you know like people aren't really flocking to Gears of War or. Um, <laughs> cut to cut to like Halo next Infinite. year, and like every Bethesda game is an exclusive to the. Xbox. Oh shit! I heard about. That. Is that right? That they're they're they, that might happen, or is that a thing? I mean, no, that it's certain, totally certain a possibility. I, they haven't said. Anything. Okay, it is a possibility. But I mean, if the money is in line, on Todd will go for it. Todd will line his pockets with that sweet, sweet Microsoft <laughs> money. Oh, okay, Tony, okay, bro. but all yeah. of them are on PC. Therefore, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, exactly. I mean, like. Any yeah, people God damn it! The Xbox just, should just be a PC. People God. will just play consoles, God. just to play the same fucking bullshit that they can play on PC, like a like Fortnite or Call of Duty or whatever like normie shit that yeah. they play can be played elsewhere. You know why? That's why the only console you should fucking buy is a Nintendo console. It's nope. been that way for nope. fucking years, and it and it's never changed. Okay, okay, I'm gonna tell you why not. I'm gonna tell you why not. Okay, okay, no, no, debatable. Because Nintendo has the best emulators every time. You don't okay, even but... need to buy the Nintendo okay, sure. console. <laughs> but is true. there a Switch emulator? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, well, you, okay. can play, you can play, like, oh, Breath of the Wild and shit it? on, um... Uh, okay, how, how's this... the Switch emulator? Okay, the Switch Not emulator is great. mid-tier, but the no, no, Wii U the... emulator. The Wii the... U I know emulators... the, no, the Wii U emulator is great. The emulators yes, are always how... perfected once the console is out of. Yeah, yeah. Once yeah. the next one. Comes exactly, out. which is why, like in my mind, you know, a Switch yeah, is worth it. Wait, I mean, the I Switch is, play the these Switch games is great. Right like, now. I've actually taken my Switch a lot of places and like used yeah. it and 
in a lot of different Fucking everybody brings their Switches. Yeah, it's because it's fucking built for it. I, I, I heard a statistic that, like... NBA 2K19. Yeah. I, I heard a statistic that, like, most people take their Switch in handheld mode. I've, like, done that maybe five times. I fucking you... neat. Hell, mm-hmm. I, I took my... I was playing my Switch on Dune's I bed at, a, at Pro and Oncon. Oh. Uh, I don't th- I don't think we've had a podcast since then, but uh, you know, content's yeah, you coming. It's rolling out. About that? No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> More content Yo, on its way, folks. Pro anon con, two hundred subs. We're we're doing it. We're doing things. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're we're trying to be a microcosm of uh, of other YouTube channels. That's. That's the goal here. Hell yeah, baby. We're basically like Booster Teeth, but with more pedophiles. How <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. do we do? Yo, <laughs> that's a high bar. Isn't it like all of them for the Rooster Teeth? No, I think it's three. I think it's three at this point. Or four. Three out of at this point? Many? Well, who, wait, who's the third? No, like you. someone in the past. Like, these are not <laughs> the first pedophile in Rooster Teeth. Um... Mm-hmm. I know one of the CEOs like uh, fucking like choked his wife out or something. Wait, which Ooh. one? It wasn't like one of the like the cool guys. It was like, like some to pirate, death? like some some no no. I think he just choked her. Well, like some investor that wasn't like yeah, on like cam? some like some uh, like, some company guy. Oh, uh, like, not like a bed? not like a content. Nobody in from Red versus Blue. Okay, I was like I. I... I mean, I know I, I'm pretty sure Jeff and Griffin got it like a divorce a while ago, but yeah. uh, I, I didn't think that would be for some reason like that. Yeah, well, no, no, no. I, I think it was. I mean, they still show up in the same shows. Was Griffin working with the dude? I don't think so anymore. Yes. I think she oh does her own. Th- or I know do she. You keep, do you keep up, Noni? No, like I, I mean, I, I never watched through the death religiously, but like I'm pretty sure I, I caught on a couple of their shows like a year ago. And I knew Griffith and um, the other the guy were divorced, but she was still on. Okay. She yeah, she did things with them for a little bit. I'm not sure. I don't know. They there are so many new people. It's really hard to tell who's still Griff, around. By the way, it's Jeff. <laughs> no, no, not Gr- Griffin. Or is it? Is that not her name? Uh, the, no, what's her name? Griff? I think it's Griffith. Are they Griff? It's Griffith. Griffith? I thought it was Griffin. <laughs> no, oh no, my Jeff. god. Joke. Yeah. Is he gonna bust I mean, out his bail? Has he busted out his bail <laughs> yet? No, it's a she. That that's the wife. She did like I yeah. think I think She's her thing was like wife. that she did like oh. sculptures with chainsaws and shit. Yeah, she was cool. Yeah. Yeah. She, yeah. She's kind of an engineer, I guess. Hmm. Uh, early <laughs> early Rooster Teeth days were fucking cool. Like when they call when it was still the Drunk Tank podcast. Uh, it was just, it was fucking legit. It was. Um, Speaking of early Rooster Teeth. Uh, I've been rewatching all of Red vs. Blue. Oh yeah! Thank fucking yeah. God! Thank it seems to God. still hold up, right? Like, what do you mean, thank the fucking God? <laughs> no, no, I, I was no, I was about like, oh my God, is he gonna say Ruby? Do I have to shoot uh, Dune <laughs> Coon? <laughs> no, Ruby fucking sucks. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I will take any and all questions about Red vs. Blue because I'm on season fifteen, I think. Fifteen? Oh shit! You've season. made a lot of headway since the last time I checked. Yes. Uh, at first, I was just rewatching the parts I remembered from a child, which is like up to season eight. But uh, but but on a whim, I decided to go further beyond and uh, test the abilities of the newer seasons. All the project freelancer shit. Yeah. Um, just to hold up. So, uh, so uh, I'll break it down for you because it's like there's like arcs to the seasons. So seasons one through five are the Blood Gulch Chronicles of uh, of a uh, Red versus Blue and. The ending of season five is like very like bittersweet and like poignant, and it's like a like a big emotional moment. It's like, and it's like it's a, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful ending to a five series show. And then season six starts, and it's like, oh, uh, it's like oh, this project freelancer and all this other shit. It like it, it like takes all the lore that was a sta- it, it it feels like a Legend of Korra basically to the to Avatar's Blood Gold mm. Chronicles. So season six, seven, and eight are mo- about big uh, about. Who who has seen Red vs. Blue, first of all? So I, I don't have. sound like a crazy... Is it just Rita? Oh, is it? Sean, do you even know what Red vs. Blue is? What do I no. have to explain? Hold no, on. What is that? What no, do... I, I mean, I never got into Rooster Teeth. I don't know. Me neither. Um, Does everyone know what Red vs. Blue is? Yes, yes, yes I know, I know. The... I mean, I'm gonna Halo watch it someday. It was like a big Halo machinima. Yeah, it's that... a Halo machinima show. 
It has its own plot. Oh, it's not Machinima? really related to that lore. No, not yeah. like the YouTube channel Machinima. Like the, the style of animation. Oh, Machinima. Oh, like okay. like doing doing content using video games. I see. Yeah. Yeah, and it's great. It's a, it's really amazing. Six, seven, and eight are the like basically. It's I think it's called like the recollection trilogy or something. Well, it, anyway, it's, it's a, isn't it seven, eight, and nine? That's the the recollection trilogy. No, it's six, seven, eight. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. It's uh, what it, is it? Reconstruction, recreation, and revelation. Yeah, the meta, the oh, meta shit. Yeah, that stuff. Which going from season five to season six. Uh, is interesting because after especially rewatching it, I never really picked up with this when I was a kid. It really does feel like a sh- like a. There's this guy named Agent Washington who's a new character and he's like doing other shit, and but he's still involved with the Reds and Blues, and it really feels like it's about him at that point for those three seasons. Well, yeah, kind of. like he's like bigger into a big part of the story, and he sh- he stays around for a while. Um, but yeah, and that's when like they got like a big production and like started making like CGI fight well, scenes and everything. And well, that, really that's based. when they start using Halo Three as well, right? Because they cycle through the, yeah. the Halo games as they make the series as they come. The thing out. about yeah, yeah, the thing about Blood of God, Call, Blood of God Blah, the first five seasons cover Halo One and Halo Two, um, and the reason uh, it's really interesting because the, the way they excuse the change in armor styles, they go to the, they get blown up by a bomb and go sent to the future. Uh, is, is the explanation they give? <laughs> yeah, the, but like that's like the kind of thing that I'm gonna come back. Like that's the kind of thing that gets retcon later out of it. Like because it's like oh they get sent five thousand years in the, or whatever into the future. Like that's like a funny like weird plot. Okay, oh my god, there's so much to fucking explain. So, <laughs> <Clear>. <laughs> okay, so Red vs. Blue. Okay, there's this guy named Church, right? So Church and Red vs. Blue in the first season. His name is Church. So yeah, it's yeah Bernie Burns' character. Yeah, yeah. Church dies in the first season of Red vs. Blue, and he comes back as a ghost. And, that's, and that is, he is a ghost for the first five seasons of the show. <laughs> yeah. But in seasons six, seven, and eight, they establish that Church is actually an AI, uh, AI clone of, the, of a guy named the director, who's the director of Project Freelancer. And he created all these AIs because he had the, this thing called the Alpha, and he cut it, he broke it into a million people. It's like, it's like, like there's so much bullshit. Like, it's, okay, it's like what? Okay, it's clearly like me ex- me explaining it to you. I was like, okay, that's kind of dumb and unnecessary. Like, why the fuck is the point? What the point? What is the point of that? You're like, but, but realizing like at the time, how dumb it is as you're explaining it to us. Is that what's happening? Well, no, I'm like, well, like in season one, no, these five, are things like, like you realize, like he at is face value. I see. Like a season one through five, it is funny that he is a ghost. Like, yeah, he, yeah, no, that's he, a, like, well, that sounds like a hilarious there, bit. There, there's all sorts of comedy centered around the fact that he is a ghost. Like they, they, is, they make it he, work in every scene. He at alive, he is a blue a Halo soldier. When he is dead, when he's a ghost, he is a white translucent, like semi translucent Halo soldier. It's funny. Okay. And actually, he can go into they... other, he can, and, he, and he can possess people. That's like the thing. He, he's a ghost. Actually, that that may be the most interesting effect that they did, just making him trans. Like, how did, did they, they shot him? His character separately and then I guess. Uh, fixed and it like, in the first like, yeah i want because they they have like times where on podcasts where they've explained how they they made it and sometimes it's really interesting like yeah i want to go back and watch some of those old like interviews and like documentaries mm, about how they made the show, uh, it i do they they would spend like hours moving the elephant around on uh the fucking um sand pit mat or the yeah. and shit like that yeah so anyway, my point is that in season six, seven, eight, there's a lot more heavy focus on taking the plot seriously. Mm. Uh, Which so is like not a lot the of, point at all, right? If I a lot of the correctly. well, there was always a plot to Red Whisper. There was always a plot, but it was really like goofy. Like it was very like like he's a ghost. He's just a ghost, right? Uh, like yeah, oh, this character is dead and he possesses people, and that's the bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there's an evil AI, and like he can also possess people. Like there's, there's like hints that there's a plot, but it's like not important at all. Like, like, there's a guy named Tucker who gets a, a, a energy sword from Halo Two, and it's like, oh, it's like a magic alien weapon. It's like, okay, that's funny, it's cool. That is, like, that's like, like he falls into a hole and finds it, and it's relevant for like the next scene where like people, like one of the other characters, is like, oh, can I have you? Like, it's like a big joke that he's the only, he's a, he's a shitty fighter, but he has a cool sword. That's like the whole joke. But like, it is in season fifteen, it is still relevant that he is like a chosen hero, and it's like that's not the point of the joke at all. The, cho- the joke, point of the joke was that. He has a cool sword, and it's a yeah. Halo energy sword. Yeah, he's, like, yeah, he's a dumb fuck who has a cool sword. That's that, yes. that that's that's just a great. That that's the I bit. mean, I that's think the they bit. started because they started investing. They started doing all the CG shit, and they started investing in making it a product rather than 
having it be like something that they just kind of they, they, they sell some merch for and, and it's like a, it is yeah. like their funny joke show instead like no i want to I, I really have to emphasize this season one through five a lot of shit happens and a lot of shit happens every episode and there is a plot that ha- like there is stuff that yeah. happens yeah, there's a through line. and it it's, is really yeah. good but mm-hmm. also it's primarily like a comedy show right yes 100 uh, percent. right now, okay. I, yeah, I always thought that, <laughs> I, you know, I don't know a lot about Red vs. Blue. I watched, like, one or two episodes years ago. Um, I was out of the room when you were explaining it, but I had my headphones on. I always thought that, like, Red vs. Blue was their goofy comedy show, and they did all their serious shit in Ruby. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, but I'm I gonna guess get not. Oh, Ruby I'll, was... I'll get to Ruby after, but I talk about Ruby. <laughs> yeah. I'll get to that. Okay, okay. okay. I'll, I'll get jump to the that. Shark. Jump the shark, yeah. Okay, I'm so, what was I? Season 6, 7, and 8. They yeah. they and, and they got get a lot of backstory. They get a lot of world building, mm. um, and it kind of takes itself a little more seriously. There's a lot more dramatic moments, but but these are characters. Most for the most part, these are still characters. You spent six seasons, six seven. You know, these are the same characters. That there's a few new characters, but they're like cool, and it's like not that big of a deal. There's like one new. Well, there's no one new character. His name is Washington. He's like the serious one. He's a he's a serious freelancer agent guy, and like that's the joke. He's a straight man. Um. But there's a lot of cool stuff that happens in six, seven, eight. It's kind of a little too serious sometimes, but it, like they're all characters you love, so it's fine. Like you've invested emotionally in these characters. There's some serious moments before in the first uh, series, so it's fine. You like all these characters, and this is seasons one through eight were written by Bernie Burns, who's the voice of Church. He is a uh, basically the main character of the show. Basically, uh, the main it, character of Rooster Teeth. Yeah, <laughs> seasons one through eight. After that. Bernie Burns stops writing the show and is replaced by a guy named Miles Luna. Luna, fuck you, Miles. Miles Luna uh, will eventually become the head writer for Ruby, but not right. at this point he is writing Red vs. Blue. That's where I know that name from, yeah. In season nine, season nine, okay, so at the end of season eight, uh, Church dies, basically, again. Well, he was an AI, and the AI gets destroyed, basically. Um, so... Well, he's trapped in. Okay, oh my god, there's so much fucking shit. Season nine is season nine is not about the red versus red and blues. Oh yeah, that's right. It's all. It's actually just only season nine is half prequel stuff. It's a prequel series about the freelancers, which are a a paramilitary organization that had that occasionally showed up in red versus like Washington and Church's girlfriend were and like one and the bad guy was a, a freelancer, like the. Freelancers were basically there's like three freelancers in the show. Now we get a whole backstory series about freelancers. Uh, this is after like yeah, and it's all in like, CG okay. too, right? Huh? It's all in CG, right? Yes, like and the- it's all in CG. It's all CGI action scenes. The other half of the series is Church living inside a program, revisit like like re- remembering, um, the, basically the first uh, five seasons, and it's like so like. Technically, like if you look at it, there is no forward of, like movement in the plot because like all the characters Church interacts with, like the Reds and Blues, are not real. They're just his memories of them, hmm. uh, and he doesn't really do anything oh. interesting. Okay, this would all be fine if the show is good. It's not, but he does. <laughs> he does a uh, what like, the fuck? Because the interactions like there's lots of yeah. There's no like nothing happens. The only thing that happens in season nine is that Church realizes that. Like he has like a character. He has like a character arc. Basically, like in the last episode, he cha- like he changes his mind or something, uh, and that's really not important. It is kind of important, but I can't get into the details right now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, season ten is as as a setup. Like we're looking at it from objectively, season ten is a setup series uh, for season eleven, because season ten introdu- brings back one of the main character basically from the freelancer story from season nine, who is thought to be dead. And she comes back, and it's like, okay, whatever. And season nine is just them, it's just them on another planet uh, for no reason, and they just kind of hang. Season nine, season nine, uh, ten and eleven are about a war on this new planet with like uh, four, five, six, seven, eight new characters. Uh, that's on top of the what eight established characters. So a lot of it's very spread out. Um, it's, it's, it basically. Feels just like okay, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you guys a story. Yeah. Have you guys <laughs> have you not been doing that? <laughs> have you guys heard a movie? Have heard? Have you guys? What, what do you think is going to happen in a movie where a, a rebel 
resistance force fights a emperor. Uh, wait, actually, wait, hold on. Susan Tan is. Sounds so autistic. Like, Speaking. Oh, no, no, no. Sp- no, 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 no. I forgot. I messed up. I messed up. I messed up. That is not. Oh season, no. Season nine, ten. See, okay, nine, ten, eleven are about killing. Uh, this guy called the director. Actually, they're about killing this guy called the director, who's a pedophilic freelancer. Um, this is kind of just like postscript for um, season eight. It's like okay, we're just cleaning up loose ends, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen are about a war on a different planet. Uh, it's it is a space war between a resistance force and a government. Yeah. Uh, but hey, but guys, guess guess what? But half the team gets split up into well, the government side, and half the team gets split up to the resistance side. Oh no, and they have to fight each other. No. Well, you yeah, but like okay, what do you you'd think, think so? Okay, but but they okay they all but they both find out individually that you know both these sides have good points. Uh yeah, and and maybe there's also these freelancer uh, mercenary guys who are like usually being like the the main forces in this conflict. Isn't that kind of strange? Like I wonder what's gonna happen this season. Uh, basic, it's basically a dumb movie plot where they realize that no, it's not the government or the resistance. It's the actual. It's the mercenary. It's the uh, it's the guys we trusted who are actually bad. Can you believe it? Wow. Uh, wow. Yeah, it's like it's really dumb. Uh, and Miles Luna writes that trilogy of uh, Vs. Blue series. Um, they're okay. They're I don't really like Miles Luna, but. I've seen the seasons after it, and I think these are okay. <laughs> I think these work as seasons because they are uh, uh, a technically they are relevant to what uh, they are okay. They're basically just like whatever. It doesn't. I don't, I don't really care. They're really boring, uh, and they're not really that funny. But the seasons that come after that are season fourteen. Uh, yeah, fourteen. Oh yeah, also Church dies at the end of season thirteen again. Church dies like five times in the series. It doesn't make any sense. Okay. They keep bringing him back. Remember he was a ghost and he, that was funny yep. that he came back to life? Yep. Uh, then he was an AI and he died and he came back to life and he was AI oh. again. It was a different oh. AI, but oh. it was still him because it's just memories of him and he came back to life. Oh. And then he came back to life again. And uh, oh. now he died this again. This sounds like fucking Kingdom Hearts. It's really retarded. <laughs> no, yeah. But <laughs> it gets really retarded. I was, was kind of thinking of that while Dune was describing the joke, this. The joke of the series at, at like some point is that Church... No, because later seasons... The, late, the late season I'm on now, I think season... 15 or 16, I don't remember, uh, is about, uh, no, it's 16, it's 16, is about, they find a message from church, like a distorted mess. someone sends them a distorted message from church, and one character is like, every fucking year or something, we you get a message from church who's, who thought, we thought died, it was actually apparently not dead, I don't want to fucking deal with it anymore, uh, and it's very funny. <laughs> But it's, it's also a very meta, serious meta joke, guys. Ha ha. No, meta, meta, meta joke. Uh, that's a that's a uh, meta joke right there. As meta. we all know, meta jokes kill long form, yeah, long the, running. The, 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 the joke is that the meta is a character in. Yeah, yeah. That is a, that is what Vito's line. Oh There's a character called the meta. Oh my um, God. Simon, but this is one, okay, one, stuck again. One imp- one important aspect to know about the the non Bernie Burns seasons is that. There was a line, the, the beginning of Red vs. Blue starts with the line, do you ever wonder why we're here? Mm. Um, and it's a joke that Generally he's not actually being, uh, he's not asking a philosophical question, he's asking a question like, why are we literally in this war, like in this yeah. canyon? And and that joke is said maybe that. five times in the Miles Luna trilogy, and like three times so far in the new trilogy. Like they say it all the fucking time, because it's like a big meme. The right. Miles Luna trilogy is defined by the fact that it makes a lot of references to the old jokes. They don't uh, make so they he's don't, a hack who can't make up his own shit is what you're that saying. That is 100% true. That is yes. exactly what I believe. <laughs> that all the jo- there's no iconic I mean, every fucking That's, that's most of, Rooster Teeth stuff of, these days, I of think. season 1 through 8 of it has iconic lines, and iconic moments. What Miles Luna's trilogy does is say those lines again. There was no nothing original or interesting about Miles Luna's uh, Rooster Teeth trilogy, uh, Red vs. Blue trilogy. I can't say more about the newer trilogy that's bad, but I think it has more interesting things going on. Because the newer trilogy... Okay, season 14 is not a season of Red vs. Blue. It is an anthology series of Red vs. Blue stories. So stories like... like There's like prequel stories. There's alternate universe stories. It is fun, I guess. It's not really that interesting, but it is neat. that it There's like some cool animation stuff. Now, season 15 is about... 
Uh, the red versus blue people have disappeared. They've disappeared because <sighs> they reti- they've retired. They've retired because after the end of the other shit, season 13, they're like, whatever. We don't we, we've done a lot. They've done a lot of shit this way. They've like fought in wars and like stopped evil, like paramilitary organizations. They've done a lot of shit. They've gone. They've come along. As the show is apt to uh, off to remind you. They've come a long way from a bunch of guys in a canyon. They they do a lot of. They remember when we used to just sit around and talk to each other. They said that all the fucking oh time. All they fuck. fucking say. All they fucking say in the show now is remember when we used to sit in a canyon and talk to each other. Remember when we, we used to do a here. comedy show. Remember oh. that. Remember when we you used to do hated podcasts? that right? You hated the comedy. You hated okay. that. So season fifteen, uh, it is about how the Red Mrs. Blue is a fucking. There's they, there's a new group of Red versus Blues committing crimes. They look just like our Red versus Blue, oh, Reds no. and Blues, but they are evil, and we don't know what their deal is. No evil. No. I, I yeah. haven't even seen that. I I I for me, Red versus Blue ends at season eight. After, I mean, after that's season just, eight. Really, it should end at season five. Is what I honestly Probably. believe. Because that is the best ending the show has had. Every time there's a, at the end of season eight, there's a tries to be a, a dramatic ending at the end of season. Oh, actually, I lied. End of season eight does not try to have a dramatic ending because it intentionally le- leaves a it's, cliffhanger. Yeah, it's kind of like a cliffhanger. Yeah, season end of season thirteen is okay. I don't hate it. End of season thirteen is the they're having they're having a final battle on the at the at the end of the war. Uh, they're getting surrounded by enemies, um, and they're having a last stand. And then and then like there's a shot of all of them ready to fight, and it's like, and Church sacrifices himself so that. Tucker, the guy with the sword, can use his special abilities with his new suit of armor. It makes sense in context. Uh, and and uh, Church has this big speech about how when someone when a hero sacrifices themselves, they don't know whether or not the good guys are going to win or not at the end because they die, you know. Yeah. And then the show ends when Church dies, and it's like, okay, I kind of see what you're going for. And if that was the last season, it would be great. But no, it's that'd not be the that last fucking season. slap. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Because the big emotional scene, like, because uh, uh, Church is the main character of the show, basically. Everything is about always about Church. He's the. There is a joke about they may say this joke all the time, especially after Benny Ben stopped writing it, that the Reds don't do anything and they have no plot relevance. The blue team is where all the interesting stuff happens. Because Church is the AI who is the leader of all this other shit, like all these connections, and Tucker is a, a badass now with a sword and he has all the, he's a big alien guy, and Caboose is the funny one. Uh, red team literally does nothing at any point in the show, and they don't matter. Okay. And there's yeah, and it, it's like funny. It's like a haha. Yeah, I guess that's true. And the, the reds are like, we don't want to do anything. We're, we're lazy. But it's also like, give these characters something to do. Huh? Give them, give them something to do. They don't do fucking anything. Why are they? In, they're, they're literally just like in the show to like talk while other people are talking or like react to things. Mm. And it's like, oh, okay, okay. That's oh my fine, god, they killed Kenny. Base. No, Kajora. <laughs> <laughs> I just there's this, char- <laughs> there's this character me. called Franklin Delano Donut who has been around since season one. He has pink armor, and everyone makes fun of him because he's gay. He's not yeah. actually gay, but he has pink armor. So the joke right. is that he says yeah, things like, course. "I was in my room getting a facial," and of course he means it's a little, like lotion. He's doing it like, like he was doing lotion, but it sounds like he's having like <laughs> yeah. you know sex. Yeah, that, well, that is his whole character. Well done. And at the beginning, he had a bit more death when Bernie Burns is writing him. After that, he has just sex jokes. Uh, and also, he's died like three times, but he's not a ghost or an AI. He just comes back with no explanation. Okay. Yeah, there, he's like, oh, I, he's like, oh, I got better. There's, there's got a time better. where he literally had a grenade stuck to the side of his head. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. The um, yeah. R- Speaking of red versus blue, American politics, anyone? No, oh no, my god, no, Rito, you wait, stole my no, joke! Yeah, fuck you, yeah, fuck yeah. you, Rito! <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, no, 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 we still can chime in. Red versus blue also has this interesting problem in the later seasons where the violence does not make sense. Because in, yeah. in the early show, you know, Church gets shot by a tank, he dies. Charge gets, uh, Sarge gets run over by a Jeep, dies, or almost dies. Like, there's very, like, realistic consequences for violence yeah. people in the later season feel like fucking like shot like nine times they get fucking like hit by rocket launchers and like thrown off cliffs totally fine well, it makes a- no after the like sense. the monty ohm cg came in like that just like yeah. opened up it for like the most ridiculous kind of violence and shit 
Yeah. Uh, and, and the, wait, and the and the and the, the Auntie on violence in season eight makes sense. It's very grounded because they don't shoot each other; they just hit each other. Like Tex just beats the fuck out of them with their hands. With a with like, a fucking traffic cone too, right? Yeah. Like, like, like it is funny slapstick violence. It is pretty cool. And season nine, they were like jumping out of buildings and like doing like quick car well, chases and like shit. Literally, someone gets shot nine times in the throat and it survives. Yeah, it and, and that, that leads into like the Ruby shit too, because Monty Ohm yeah. did at least the first season of Ruby, right? I don't know about the second season before he died. So, Oh, no, I'm not done yet. So, season nine of uh, Red vs. Blue has a lot of uh, big action scenes, over-the-top, like, big Matrix-type shit. And, like, it is about... Those scenes are restricted to the scenes with the freelancers in the past. So, it's like, okay, these are big action movie characters. So, like, it's kind of fine. But after that, not only do they stop doing, like, big, cool action scenes... They also just like the act, the the quality of the action scenes also just gets worse, and I think I like I don't want to say this because I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think it is because Monty Ohm died and like he was the big animator. Because mm. um, the fi- the fight scenes of the later seasons are absolutely garbage. They were like they were clearly guys in mocap suits like pretend fighting, and they just suck. They're just bad. Okay. Like they're like f- like these high tech warriors are fighting in slow motion. Basically, it's like really embarrassing to watch. Um. So where is that? Yes, the Red vs. Blue. The, in the season 15, they find the fake Red vs. Blues and they... Okay. So remember when I said the director was a... The director of Project Freelancer uh, was a character and they, they kill in like season like 11 or something? Mm. So the whole thing is with Red vs. Blues that they are not actually Halo Master Chief soldiers. They are simulation troopers. They are... They are... They were putting this box canyon like divided in times because they are absolutely useless and they are just used for training purposes for the freelancers. And then like... Like Toy Story? So... What? Like Toy Story? How is that like Toy Story? <laughs> because you said they're in a box and they're not real. Like... No, not like no, a no, toy no, box. No, no. Like... <laughs> a, a, a boxed canyon. A boxed oh, canyon. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the first basically 11 or so seasons are about killing the viol- very viol- violently killing the people who did that to them, who like yeah. fucked with them because they signed up for the army and they got sold by the army to like this other corp- this paramilitary corporation to be chess subjects, basically. Wow. And a lot of them die and get fucked over. So it's like a very bad thing that happened to them. But in season 15, they meet another group of Red versus Blues who have got a, or they've gone around collecting other red versus blues to start an army to go fight the mil- the the UNSC which is the government basically oh, nice. because they fucked because they fucked them over uh and this is like oh yeah this is just like how they killed the director of project they had a whole like two seasons about find tracking down the single director of project freelancer just so they could go kill him yeah uh, yeah and that's not even like the, the the organization was already over this is like a personal vendetta thing they just wanted to kill the guy who made the organization the organization had already been disbanded legally, but they wanted to kill the guy who made it. So you'd think that in season 15, when they meet the other Reds as Blues, they'd have, you know, solidarity because they have been specifically fucked over because they have had like a bunch of freelancers interactions and a lot of them have been hurt, you know, been traumatized, been fucking killed. You yeah. know, a lot of traumatized. But these other Reds and Blues called the Blues and the Reds mm. um, oh, are, are, are the bad guys. They are the explicit villains of the, the season why and it's like wait why didn't, didn't we just have like a whole thing about personal vendettas and how killing was based and mm-hmm. like the, but like for some reason now because this is after the miles luna trilogy there's a new writer i forget his name it's like joe something and he is very killing you know killing very bad killing is very bad even though they kill people all the time in the show and they continue to kill people all the time mm-hmm. uh it's still very bad there was a joke in this season where Two guys, two that they're like storming an enemy hill, like a bunch of guards on it, and the two guards are talking like, "Man, it's it's so great that we like, defend Hitler on the internet and don't believe in climate change." Just like everybody else who works here, it's like you oh, don't have to justify it. They're God. like, "You've already decided that these are bad guys, so like why?" Like this is weird justification. Like, okay, it's okay fu- to that's kill them. So okay, even though I agree, that is forced. <laughs> yeah, it's really retarded. Um, what? Um, so yeah, the, red, the blues and reds are an interesting concept because they are other simulation troopers who are basically like, they are, like the joke is that they are like, oh, there's a guy named Church and there's a guy named Temple. There's a guy named Sarge. There's a guy named Serge. You I know, see. Like, it's like, it's like, it's that kind of, they look exactly the same. They talk yeah, the same. They really yeah. this. It's yeah. pretty dumb. But like the writing of the season is okay. The one thing I have to notice about, mention about season 15 and 16 
which are both written by this new guy, is that there are a lot of movie jokes. There are, oh. there, there's lots of jokes about classic movies, there's lots of movie references, and there's lots of jokes about story structure. Ooh, ooh. Jokes about like, I have Hit to ignore... Huh? Give us a couple. Hit us. Then they're literally nothing interesting at all. They're like nothing noteworthy. Think of like the barest like there's this joke where someone someone uh, robot's head is floating through space and it does a Star Trek intro. Like that kind of shit. It's like oh. nothing. It's like it's not like clever at all. Um it's like it's, it's like literally who are we gonna call? Ghostbusters, like that kind of shit. <laughs> oh. It's like nothing. Okay. And, and I can't help but think like this reeks of someone just out of like film school who like <laughs> who who bought, who, ha, who like read the film like structure books like How to Save a Cat by whatever this guy's name like yeah like, yeah yeah like yeah like uh, How to Save a Cat that's not what it's called no it's Save, save it's the called Cat save, save the Cat yeah like the most basic shit like and they introduce a character who is uh who is a of uh, uh there's a news team in the 15 and 16 seasons and, like in this. But it's not ju- if it was just limited to that one photog- like video camera character who made the like the film jokes, I would be fine with it. But it's literally every character, so I know it's just a crutch. Right. Uh, yeah. All I mean, all the people who work for Rooster Teeth have now are they they're not just like a bunch of cheesy uh, schmucks, you know? Like the I don't know if you guys have listened to any of their like products in recent years, but um, yeah, it's. It's really, there's, I mean, I think this, I mean, it's very targeted towards, like, it's more targeted towards kids than I think it was even, like, when I was a kid, you know? Uh, when I was... Okay. Uh, example, in Ruby, which is, I no, guess... No, I'm talking about Versus Blue. So... No, 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 just a second. Just about the violence. No, no, hold on. Just save it, bro. Dirko, just a pal- okay. just, just a second. In Ruby, the <laughs> only reason that characters don't bleed and monsters don't bleed is because... Uh, this is a show for kids. Is that's, Ruby that's a, supposed to be a show for kids? Yes. I I think they Ugh. that's their their market. You know, like it, I, a lot of their earlier shit was definitely. I mean, it was potty humor for sure, but I think it was you know maybe more of like a teen audience, more of like an I older. I don't say it's part, the first five seasons of Edward's Blue. Still, there's no like like fart jokes or like there's amateur jokes, but they're all very funny. Yeah, like no, I mean, I, I still think it's a very funny product. Like, I like Red vs. Blue, st- like, the early shit, for sure. I would not call it immature uh, humor. Like, the, I, like, it, like mm. I just watched it, like, a few days ago. It still holds up. Mm. No, yeah, I mean, I don't know if I don't know if potty humor is an app descriptor. I just just like, you know, it's 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 crude in some ways, but it's yeah, funny. It's, it's, it's like crass. good. Co- it's good comedy. Yeah. Yeah. So in season fifteen, so I you may have noticed I've talked about from after Bunny's left or season around season six to like se- season thirteen. It's very it's, it becomes more serious, you know. Yeah, yeah, it becomes more serious. So, and that's a big problem I kind of had with it. But it's like, yeah, you know, it, it depends on the execution. Of course. Uh, but I hundred I percent believe that they had a lot of complaints that it was really serious for no reason now. Uh-huh. And so season sixteen, the one season I'm still on, is. Uh, not serious in the dumbest way it could be because it immediately introduces gods and time travel oh, and like, it's what? like it, and the gods aren't even like ser- they're like joke like like air horn sounds play when they come out and it's like what the oh, fuck is this oh, what no. is it's like what is Hello? going on we they're what? going through time wait a yeah, minute and like, you're doing does red versus blue have the the unholy trinity of um uh, what is it? Time travel, memory loss, and uh, some characters are other characters. Like they, they're the there, same there's thing. memory loss for sure. And yes, that, there's memory loss. Are the, some characters other characters? Are there some characters other characters? Um. Um. Okay. Or is, or well, are people okay. secretly okay. related to each other? Well, hold on. Sort of. Yeah, hold you on. Said so, no, 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 Possess no, no. each other. So yeah. No, hold on. Uh, the director of Project Freelancer is his name is Leonard Church, and he. Uh, created an AI based on his personality called the Alpha. The Alpha was ba- uh, split into multiple pieces, but the most important one is Epsilon. Well, no. A- Alpha was then put into a-, a body, and it was put in a canyon, and his name was also Leonard Church. He lost his memories. He doesn't remember that he's the director. And, okay, so Leonard, the new Church, who I'll just call Church and not the director, who's young, uh, dies, He gets uh, and he comes to a quote-unquote ghost, you know, he's an AI later, <clears throat> and he... When this alpha AI also dies, but 
he is survived by another AI called Epsilon. It's basically church again. He is Epsilon. He goes into church. So there are four people named church, basically. They are... They are distinct when people. You walk away, you don't hear me say, please. So the, the last thing is just like Kingdom Hearts. Don't go. The, the is just last King church Hearts. is a memory of a memory of a memory. Literally that. <sighs> this uh, is Simple Kingdom Hearts level clean bullshit. Is the, is the way, way that you're, you're making, making me feel tonight. tonight. God fucking to damn. It yeah, Dune, the, what you said about this, like, being the legend of Korra, like, like, the later parts of Red vs. Blue being the legend of Korra to the the first parts of it makes a lot of sense to me. By the way, you, but like, talk about that for 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Straight I watched I some of that. Hold me. What yeah. Yeah, yeah, get it all out. Morning is a yeah. little later yeah. on. Oh, I can't okay, wait so to do this to this you guys one Monty day with Oom. fate. Oh, yeah, it's, Monty. it's coming. Shout out to Monty. Yeah, yeah. shout out to Monty Oom. Um. In 2013, he released, a, he released like a fucking trailer called The Red Trailer, the most based piece of animation of all time. Then he started, yeah. like, for whatever reason, making this show called Ruby. Also, the head writer is also called Miles Luna. So this show was right. destined to fail. But like mm-hmm. three seasons in, Monty fucking dies. Oh, and then the show just man. becomes exponentially worse. Yeah. <sighs> Shout out to Monty. He was a really fucking good animator. Um. Okay, so Simon, to answer your question from earlier, Ruby yeah. did not start out as a kid show. It's the reason they don't bleed is because they have there's a plot reason why they don't bleed and like because right. they have like magical oils and stuff. Right? Sure, and that's, right. it's also like a technical limitation. Of course, uh, uh, yeah, I, I assume that they had to come up with a lore reason for a technical limitation. That was my. It is important to know that Ruby did not start out as a show for little babies. No, I watched out, the first season. It seemed pretty serious. It, it started yeah. as it, it I, seemed I, like I think teenager. The first season was like written poorly though, no, but no, yeah, that was before they did like Ruby Chibi and uh, you know all the other. This is the Ruby best part shit. about Ruby. No, mm. Ruby started out as a. It's, there's not enough. It's not the same amount of. A, it's, it's supposed to be an anime, so it's like for anime age, like right? 15, of course, 14, 15, 16. But it got to the point because it's you know colorful characters. You know, it's very progressive. Lots of women characters. Yeah. Um, that got to the point where a lot of younger people watched it with the kids, basically. Sure. Uh, right. Right. That's sort of like internet millennial who like grew up to have kids. Right. Yeah. Makes sense. Basically. And it got uh, to the point. I forget which ending of which season it is. I think it might be season four. Where they had to put out a disclaimer, like, "Hey, don't watch this with your kids. No, no, it gets no, no, fucking, no, no. People will fucking die." Wow. No, no, that oh, was the beginning of season Simon. three. Okay, we're getting season three then. Okay, the Simon, beginning yeah. of season three. They added this disclaimer, but side note. Okay, the show is a kids show. Uh, the commentary and the fucking panels of volume one says so explicitly. Th- that's the reason why, we're like, for example, you mean of the manga? No, no, Ruby the show. <laughs> Ruby the show, like volume one. Because yeah. the they, they, they had that thing that they put in Shonen Jump that... Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, I, I read that, it. It's it is also fucking bad. terrible. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, but, like, the show is a kid's show. It's supposed to be somehow a kid's show. That's why they're in Volume 3, mm-hmm. when it's, quote-unquote, became serious, they added mm-hmm. the disclaimer for parents. It's the other way around. It was a kid's I show. See. Then it became mature, I guess. I don't I believe mean, it. Like it. Why, it's how, never how, been how, mature. No, I understand. No, Kajora's been trying through. to say this. Kajora, ah. what? Oh yeah, uh, I was gonna are... say when you said, oh Simon, when you said the you know millennial who grew up and then you know showed it to their kids, like I just yeah. thought of this this terrifying image of some millennial just like, oh here a kid, oh, this kid's bothering me so much. Here, take the iPad, watch this this show. You will love it. It's called Annoying Orange. Oh my god. No. Okay, Dinko, no. What did you, <laughs> no need, what did you, you say, say Dinko? When you when you say kid show, what do you mean kid show? No, okay, I'm just going to say it right now. I, I I believe that's bullshit, but that's what they said. It was the first I year I was watching Ruby since like minute 1, and that was like one of the first interviews when like the directors, but, uh, the three of them were asked, "Hey, what's this like, you know, age demographic?" They said, "Oh, kids." That's why the characters don't breathe, yeah. you know. See, they Ruby said always Volume read one. to me. Yeah, I, I watched that doesn't make it. That doesn't make but, it good, though. But it's also no. about racism. So I don't know why. It'd be, exactly. I don't has, know what the fuck was that about. It has but de- they said demons it. and monsters and a lot of action scenes. And they kill yeah, a lot if, of things. Yeah, if they it's think it's for, for kids, kids. Like, that's super it's for strange. Teenagers. 
No, it's yeah, no, anime. it's it's a it's a like baby's first anime type fucking like, show. Like anybody, like there's not like a fucking disclaimer and like sort of online. Like I was getting kind of you know don't okay, let your kids watch. Yeah, like oh oh this elf man's gonna touch this girl's <laughs> boobies and lick her on the <laughs> face. Weird. You are making way too much sense right now. Like, that's <laughs> them. Like I'm just saying that's what they fucking said. Okay, because the disclaimer that happened in the beginning of volume three was like there was a podcast. I I watched the clip. The dudes let yeah. say oh. Uh, in this season, a character dies at the end, and, and like we we felt it was too serious, and we too were maturing, serious. you know, as writers. So they included the disclaimer. That was the They're reason. Miles Lino is literally a retarded person. I don't. No, trust. he is. He obviously is. Yeah. Wow, that's really fucking. Yeah, I didn't. I want again. I watched the first season of Ruby. I did not think that was a fucking kid show. Uh, I just want to go that's on the really record Miles Luna. Did for That's like why I a... don't fuck with Rooster Teeth because they do stupid <laughs> shit like this. <laughs> no, I recommend wholeheartedly the first eight seasons of Red vs. Blue. Well, I will not watch them. But... They were they are great series. I believe oh, you, and I'm glad you put like in them. Quite the pitch <laughs> for them. Just I mean, I was like, like you have your lecture topic on point. Not not yeah, even not even that, say. but like the other the other like little Mashima shorts and shit they did uh the fear one that whatever whatever that one was called that one was fucking funny Not i remember la- laughing my ass off to that um the only the... like the machinima type thing i've seen like you know, you said machinima is like they use game footage to make like a show right yeah, yeah. So there was this guy sir salamans who made uh mm-hmm. the series called legendaries from construct which is like gary's mod uh pokemon so it was about um it was about dialga palkia zekrom and reshiram trying to track down uh you know they're trying to track down justin bieber because he assassinated um sammy the samurai and oh. hatsune miku no uh-huh. miku <laughs> and he was holding rayquaza his own hostage. original character hatsune miku <laughs> <laughs> yes they had to save Oh, oh, and they uh, eventually run into, like, Exernius and Yveltal around the time, like, X and Y okay. is a thing. And, like, okay. Exernius is, like, a pretentious as fuck and really, really French. And, like, he uses text-to-speech mm. voices for, uh, the, D- oh. for the characters. So he puts, for Xerneas, he just puts, like, English but with the French dialect. So it's like, mm. hello. I see. Dude, <laughs> fucking um, Arby and the Chief. Arby and the fucking chief that because that was that was Microsoft Sam and Microsoft Mike voices for because uh, they it, it half of it was a machinima half of it was in in Halo and then the other half was the action figures that the characters actually oh were. Oh my god! It, yes, it was it was the a, a Master Chief action figure and the Arbiter action figure talking and like a little stop it, motion. Y- uh, no, well, it's just it literally they're it's not to stop motion. It's literally like real time. Pictures. They're, they're like picking <laughs> them up and slamming oh, them down, kind of shit. Oh, that's fucking <laughs> and, awesome! And uh, and Master Chief is a total dumb asshole, and Arbiter's like the smart. He's like the straight cop, you know. To uh, it, it's it's fucking. There, there, there are like nine seasons of that. Um, well, I think they actually brought. I think he brought it back after Machinima died or something like that. But uh, the, well, I guess I guess spoilers. I mean, it's been out for anyone. The, the, the end of the the not. I think it's like at season nine or whatever. The last the finale season was supposed to be. Uh, they fucking because it all takes place in this one dude's apartment. This guy named John, the guy who creates it, is like the owner, but he's never at home. And right. uh, oh. they end the series uh, by turn leaving the gas stove on and lighting a cigarette and blowing the whole fucking place up. That oh, seriously, uh, that that was one of my fucking favorite things on Machinima. Holy shit! Yeah, I'd I'd wholeheartedly recommend watching that if <laughs> anyone Does- is so inclined. Put Does Shadow of Israel count as a machinima? I guess so. Yeah. 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 Uh, I mean, it's it's a well, yeah. They play it's very gameplay play themselves focused. Playing Minecraft though, right? Well, there's other characters though. Yeah. They, yes, there are, there other, are characters, other characters. So. which is why, yeah. I don't know. It, it's it's very gameplay focused. That's the only reason why. I, yeah. I, I mean, I'm it's skeptical. kind of half of it is kind of a let's. It's kind of somewhere between a let's play and a machinima because they're yeah. technically playing characters, but they're playing themselves. Um, Shadow of Israel is based. Shadow of Israel is really fucking based. Like, imagine playing a Minecraft survival series just on your YouTube channel and then turning it Eat. into a fucking, like, story Adventure quest hunt, yeah. game. Yeah. 
So it's fucking, fucking awesome. Finish. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fuck them. Uh, fuck the Uggs cast. It's but, it's good. Uh, like it's great watching well, for most of it. So yeah, one hundred percent. Uh, guys, what is no need but other than the guy with the worst opinions? The best Rooster Teeth thing ever is Ruby TV because it's made by different people with actual <laughs> white and stuff. Like you the just, entire. You just t- haven't. I tried to watch Ruby TV. It's retarded. Ruby. What's Jeez. the? They had like Have a Sims that? Machinima. I think that was even before Red vs. <laughs> Blue. It was around the same time, I guess. Oh, Different. that must be. That, I, that's a really easy game to do. Tonight, but... How yeah, I mean, I don't. I don't remember Ruby. it being that good. It was kind of like you know. It's kind of low ball, but uh, yeah, sure. I, I don't know. Episode into Ruby Chippy, I was like, eh. Yeah. No, no, no. How far did you make it into actual Holy Ruby? Shit. I want to know. Shit. Into actual Ruby? Yes. Uh, I think I made it to season four. Okay, season four is the like the last season that like you know shit does not become bad shit retarded and terrible. Mm. I mean, want to kill the white. What are you talking about? It's all awful. Yes, no, it's correct. all okay. You do not know what they do in vo- okay. Watch the fifth season and then you actually want to kill I'm yourself. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> okay, they spend the entire fucking season in a house and that's it. Nothing happens. The, the classic For no the- need, bro. Okay, w- uh, read all 900 chapters, then debate me. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. it's shit. No, Dylan Quinn is saying it's shit. I'm saying it gets shittier. <laughs> I agree that Ruby is shit you. and it probably right. does get shittier. <laughs> The one thing I always admired about Red vs. Blue, that even the first episode of the first season, like, feels like an actual production. Like, they yeah. have microphones, they have everything set up, there's no, like, like, it feels very professional, it was, like, even if you ignore the fact that it's, like, in 360p, you yep. know, like, shitty <laughs> phone microphones. There was a, uh, it a adds. fucking, what do you call it? I'm sure people have done, like, GTA Five machinimas, just because, like, it's, uh, that world yeah. is so... The, the Gorillas just released a music video, like, yeah, three I, days I ago, shot them. in fucking Grand Theft Auto Five, and I said, what is th- What? It, <laughs> You're allowed to do that? It's not even <laughs> great for, like, a Grand Theft Auto Five video, but I, I've watched the whole thing, I was like, it's, this is... Just the, con- just the idea that that, ha- that would happen, that they would make that, is fucking hilarious to me. The game is yeah i mean also, noodle, the, the fact noodle that they haven't, they haven't done that, that video as by always, this point so, is actually you know. a little more amazing fair fair it just really took me back. my i might t- like i was over at my dad's before i came over here you guys know that and he was like oh girls made a new music video and i was like what and then it was gta 5 and i was like what what's happening <laughs> hello <laughs> yeah it was very interesting noodle did your dad look, know it was gta did your dad know it was a video game yeah yeah did you think did you think it was real life no, he did not. He's a, he, he he was like introduced me to video games. I was playing GTA Five once, and yeah. my grandpa walked in. He was like, "What movie are you watching?" Oh my god! <laughs> I was like, "Oh no, it's, well, a, it's a video game." Yeah. Oh, funny old man. That was like what what Simon just said reminded me that like when my dad originally like bought the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty in the in the in the house like that was something yeah. it was something that we'd like do to or we'd talk about like video games together we uh we played the peter jackson's king kong game together oh my god and he's like oh yeah i got this far last night you check it out it's like oh wow. cool we had to like play video games together that was the that was, uh some great father-son bonding oh yeah i, I used to argue with my dad about uh dragon ball z <laughs> <laughs> that's how i grew up my uh, my mom is the person who showed me Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, which is like my first Whoa. and one of my favorite anime. She was like, "Yeah, there's like this really cool show. I think I think you're old enough to watch this." And I was like, "Hell yeah, this is great." <laughs> How did she find out about it? Because she was just on Netflix. Dude, my mom was watching Inuyasha oh, show when I was a fucking uh, baby. You, you got on your, ne- your like mom's Netflix, like, if I ever die, fu- if I ever die, I want you to get a bunch of ingredients in a circle and try to resurrect me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, like for real. Like I grew up like with Inuyasha and Cowboy Bebop on. Damn. I, That's uh, weird that he was on I'd Netflix play, and he got into I play Netflix. Mario 64 uh, with my dad. And, mm. like, he would <laughs> he would literally be like, like, I'd always beat him. And, be, and you know, I'm like, Dad, beat you gotta... Beat in Mario 64? What? Yeah. And I was like, you you gotta How? look at the map uh, also Sixty-four. while oh. you're driving, you know, to you know to find the shortcuts and stuff. And he's like, what? How can you look at the map? I, can, I don't want to look at the map. I'm driving. <laughs> Enjoy, you're not putting a turn signal <laughs> yeah i'm i'm thoroughly convinced that playing mario kart for the 15 years of my life in which i was able to do that probably longer uh has made me a better driver i would like to i, w- I wish you went to a like an arcade at pro and oncon because i am like 
legitimately good at arcade racing games. Oh yeah, um, we gotta uh, go to a fucking arcade if we. Yeah, yeah. Tampa, like, baby. I can, go, I can sit down and get like, <laughs> yeah. a first place thing. On Simon, machine. come on. Show up to Tampa. What? what? Are you guys actually doing that? I Why want not? to. If, I'm if not going to fucking Florida. I'm not. Mia, Rito and I are totally down. Yeah. I'm going to Tampon, Florida. I mean, I do believe that Florida is the ass crack of this country, but, uh, you know, it's all in good fun. No, I am not. Dude, I, you don't want to get the Kung Flu? Not, I'm not trying to get sick, my dude. I'm not trying to get sick. I mean, I'm, pr- I'm probably going to be I laid mean, off by then anyway, so, you fair. know. <laughs> fair. Yeah. Fair. I mean... Simon, you we'll all take our precautions. We'll I don't uh, sure, but like we're gonna be like at a fucking event. If we want to go to the fucking dick show thing, like all the you, you all those motherfuckers <laughs> are not gonna be doing their proper protection. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah, but you can. You know, you can yeah. wear like a hazmat suit if you want. But just uh, yeah, I mean, just be, I could. Uh, no, like literally, just dude. Be I mean, like, that hey, would can be. You, you can could probably get up. You could probably get up on stage have with that if you were if you, if you wore a hazmat suit. They're like, <laughs> oh okay, who, God, who's I this could. fucking clown? Let's. Uh, yeah. It's like, get away from me! I have grandparents. Six feet. <laughs> yeah. wear, wear your "I have COVID" feet. shirt. Oh my God! Yeah, yes! over the hazmat suit. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's fucking good. Yeah, you just have to lean into it. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Like, get like a fuck, like a Biden twenty twenty mask. Get a oh yeah, God. get a like a Darth Vader voice box and koof mm-hmm. through it. Yeah, it's fucking hilarious. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. I'm still not fucking driving all the <laughs> yeah. way to Florida though. Well, go get a flight. No, fuck it's probably please. like sixty bucks for you if you buy it now. It's probably cheap. I don't know, man. I'm not. I'm not looking. To I, go I, Florida, I I get it, Simon. But... We're not convincing you. I get. It. We won't try anymore. Yes. We'll we'll forget but... about you. We'll move you on. won't. But I Sean, know. Sean, <laughs> Sean, uh, what? Sean lives that's... even further. <laughs> no, that's literally yeah. the exact opposite end of the country. I like am halfway. Well, you're you're Sean... in the middle. That's there's no end that you are at. Yeah. You're you were at the the um. Yeah, I'm I'm equidistant between end. Florida and Sean. It'll you be to do something. You guys man. have to fucking talk. I talked for thirty minutes. <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah. That was very impressive. Uh, Dune's, Dune's voice uh, box is blowing out. <laughs> fucking probably. Actually, feel fine. Okay. I, I, I wanted to answer now. this somewhat into the podcast, so I'm just gonna do it now. Uh, yeah. In one of the epic speeches of Miles Luna, he was shit talking every anime and, and talking about how Ruby is way more like epic and big brain. <laughs> And one of them uh, was uh, Gurren Lagan, and he said, "Then I quote, that show is like lame and that deep." You piece of oh. shit! I literally they have like an anime podcast where they it's it's a podcast to describe. I mean, they they talk about anime sincerely, but they don't know anything about anime, and it's not like when I when I say like, uh, Digi or Nate don't know anything about anime. It's yeah. like. It's like, like they, they really it's they like they really don't know anything shows. about anime. Yeah. Like <laughs> like, like Cowboy Bebop, that's a show. Conjugal. The okay, oh my fa- is... my least favorite genre is chibi. Oh, I, I hate uh, chibi. <laughs> like that's not a genre. I think that's this... isn't that an actual quote, Vito? Yeah, that's an actual uh, I clicked on one of their but that was the first time I was like, I wonder what this podcast is like. I just <laughs> skipped to a random time code like, yeah, you know, I got to say my least favorite uh genre is chibi. Uh who the fuck said that? It was like <laughs> What does that mean? What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> Explain to me what it means. <laughs> They like, they described uh, some I'll, shows or something that weren't like actually cheap. They were just like, do they I don't mean know, like shit like like mo- like, like moe what? shit? I think. Yeah. I, I mean like maybe literally cheap. I mean they probably view anime through the lens of Ruby. Like yeah, Ruby's anime. We make an anime. That's, it, no, that's no, what I we want to know. They think, oh, okay, okay, they for think a second, it, Ruby's anime because no, 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 it has oh, okay. girls in a school and they fight <laughs> monsters. No, okay. just look at it. Anime. Do you want to know how much Ruby is anime? In volume How 5, much? which is the f- worst volume, it, My Hero Academia was aired in its first season or whatever. There is uh-huh. a scene that's a replica of like the All Might versus like Numa or whatever scene. Exactly. Oh my god. And, and in the commentary, they're like, oh, we watched My Hero Academia. I thought that scene was cool. So we like c- came up with this whole character just to have it. And I'm like, oh my god. <sighs> No, what? Uh, no, 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 can, no, no need. Can you talk about like the five backstories of lore that Weeby has? Like every season, they come up with a new way of how the <laughs> lore actually works. Oh okay. my god, is that true? 
Uh, yes, they do it in like every season. They just forget yep. what happened in the previous season, and the new season is a whole entire backstory and lore. I know there's like the crystal magic dust. Is that a thing? No, it's not magic. No, it's not magic. It's not magic. What are you bro. talking about? What is they, it? What? They're very explicit that it's not magic. Okay, stop. <laughs> it is magic. It is not but magic. In the w- no, 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 stop, 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 stop. In the world, it is not perceived as magic. It Somehow, is magic. For compa- it to- no, to <laughs> us, it is magic. To them, yeah. it's no, just no, no, science. No, no, no. It's Simon, just the way their world works. No, no, it's way more retarded than that. Okay, Simon, I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you yeah. right now. Uh, if someone shoots lightning out of their hand, would you yeah. consider that magic? Um, from my perspective, in in our mundane real world, yes. Okay, so here is the difference. There is no difference because there is dust <laughs> and will just make you shoot lightning. But then there's yes. like people who can like shoot lightning, but that's somehow yeah. different, even though it's the same lightning. Those like are <laughs> magic, bro. So they just they have like dust energy in them? No, <laughs> no <laughs> magic. That's magic, bro. Okay, there is one <laughs> chick who can stop time, but that's not magic. That's her ha- semblance. Okay. okay, but some. Okay, but no, but to us, to regular humans, that is magic. Uh, yeah, I guess. So I will call it just like the bending in Avatar is, like is magic, even though it's a martial yeah. art. No, 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 no. But, but the characters, the characters in the show, there is character who goes super speed and character who shoots lightning and they do all this crazy stuff with dust. But then a new yeah, character powers. shows up and she can shoot lightning. And they're like, oh my god, I can't believe this is happening. Like, there is a line in the show where a character just says, I can't believe this. How can you shoot lightning? And I'm like, oh my god, um, you can stop time. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> like, do you yeah, see what I mean? What? Ruby's for fucking... Ruby's on some shit, dude. Yeah. What are the like, two like, guys? Like, there's like the maidens who are like the Jesuses or something. Then there's like the Triforce. No, there is uh, the gods. There is the gods, uh, though. In, oh in volume God. 6... Is Ruby a monotheistic uh, no. uh, world? Remember, you know, wait, Simon, do you remember the beginning of Ocarina of Time? Yes, where the exactly. three goddesses, they come down and make the Triforce, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Gotcha, Actually, so no, they just stole it from Zelda? Gotcha, yeah. The world is a simulation, though. Is it? Is that new? Okay. Well, that's probably okay, true so of like, our world, so like, whatever. No, 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 okay. So the gods of Ruby, this is like retconned three times, but this is like the latest version, you know? This is the updated patch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, okay. They got the patch notes in. This is the expansion. I, I, I do, I'm not lying to you. In every season, the, the first, like, no, the second episode, it's always like 20 minutes, and it's all backstory. But that oh. happens in every season, and each backstory okay. is completely different than the last one. Well, okay... <laughs> Okay, here's the latest version. There are two gods who created the world. One is like, you know, uh, yellow and glowy, and he's the good one. And while, yeah. and one is black and shadowy, and he's the evil one, okay? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. Yeah. And they created the world as an experiment, okay? And, and, and that yeah. experiment was like, we want to see if humanity can be like good or whatever. And they gave humanity magic. Now, magic, dust doesn't exist yet. People can just, like, okay. use magic. They can just yeah. fly and, like, do wacky bullshit. Okay. Uh, the main... Ca- it's, he's called Osben. He's, like, a, the big headmaster guy in Ruby. He, mm. he basically dies. And his wife, which is, like, the main villain of Ruby, she's called Salem. She, like, takes right. his butt to the God her. of Light. Yeah. And she's like, hey, bro, please revive him. I'm begging you. I want to really fuck him. And he's like... No. And she's like, okay. She takes him to the shadowy one. And, she, and she's like, hey, bro, can you please revive him? I really want that dick. And the shadowy god is like, okay. And then he revives him. But then for whatever reason, like the, the glowy god shows up. And then he kills him. Again, he's like, no, you cannot revive him. Fuck you. Then there is this hilarious scene where they kill him like 18 times. And they kill him and they keep reviving him. Like a fucking porn game. And his wife is just sitting there crying. And after they're like, and they're just like, okay, stop. We need to talk about this. They come somehow to the conclusion that she tricked them. So they curse oh. her with immortality. So she cannot die and meet him in the afterlife. And, and afterlife is, is apparently real. Yes, heaven is real in the show. 
Wait, what? Okay. So now she's <laughs> immortal. Ruby, Ruby man. What is this? Ruby. It's, it's Ruby. Okay. Oh, it's, this is Ruby still? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is Ruby still. Okay. She like, wants to kill herself. And tor- immortal Torsha was his rid- rid- daughters of Mimosini. Yeah, basic that. Okay. She wants to kill herself. She just wants to like go to hell or heaven or whatever to meet this guy. But they made her immortal. She was like, you know what? Fuck you. She was like, goes around and like, hey guys, the gods are dicks and we can steal all their magic. Even though we have magic, we can get even mm. more magic. Yeah, even somehow. cooler, better magic. Yeah. Somehow. Yeah. Yeah, it's just details are fuzzy. There is no it's, definition yeah. of what's the better magic they're gonna get. They already have it. <laughs> okay. So they just march in to the gods and they're like, hey, we're gonna kill you now, gods. And then the god just snaps his finger and kills everyone except her. And then they fuck off to space and blow up the moon. In Ruby, the moon oh. is like fucking destroyed. They're just the gods on their way out. They're like actually okay. aliens. Okay. I'm so lost. What? Just... <laughs> okay, uh, so now you're like... asking. Okay, now you're asking, probably. If they killed all the no. humans. Yeah, I'll, you're not. They killed all the humans. <laughs> you know what I'm and wondering? Just... <laughs> they killed what? all the humans. Well, like, you know, the humans in the show came from. Well, actually, uh, it's the <laughs> fucking... Uh, they evolved from monkeys. Oh. Those are not the same human. That's so the reason different... they don't okay. have magic. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. I can, I think I can spin this into a broader topic. Okay. What do you guys <laughs> no, we think? To, I no, no, no. Donnie was not oh. done. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, there is way God, more. Uh, across the timeline of space and time, well, you know, humans are just monkeys. They're still not, not humans yet. Uh, Mrs. Immortal just falls into the dark juice. Okay. There is just a place <laughs> full of like but... sludge. And she's dark, like, the, yeah, the dark in... juice. Yeah. The yeah, yeah, the dark juice. It's the purple the dark flip. <laughs> <laughs> she just falls into the dark juice and just becomes evil. It is said, and I quote, she becomes her one true desire is she to destroy the world. She in darkness and it was never the same. Yes, again. she was actually kind of naked when she did this. Hot. Accidentally, she just like slipped and fell into it. <laughs> she slipped out of her clothes and fell into the darkness. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I just oh point no, Step Bro, who's also a goo puddle. I'm falling okay, into you naked. <laughs> uh, the shadowy god and the glowy god, they're not like evil and good or whatever. They're just like uh, aliens who created Earth and the humans. That was it. But like for okay. whatever reason, there is just like this uh, fucking goop in the middle of okay. somewhere. <laughs> she just happens to stumble upon it, slips in, and becomes evil. Okay. Yeah. Then she goes action. and lives in the oh, woods. Oh, when you a... fall into the goop and become evil. <laughs> okay, she the, she goes up. Silly Remember girl. this. Okay, her one true desire is to destroy the world. That's it. She becomes like, sure. you know. Guess what? While humans are evolving from monkeys to humans, she just chills out in the woods and does nothing. She doesn't actually, like, kill anyone or whatever. Yeah. Back on the afterlife... The glowy god shows up to this, like, dude who they killed 18 times, who's still, like, confused, and what the fuck is happening? And he's like, hey, your wife is evil, even though she did nothing, but, like, you have to uh, uh, fucking stop her and unite the new humanity and then summon us using these four legendary weapons that we're just gonna put somewhere, I guess. And you're gonna, like, have to stop her, unite humanities, then summon us to judge you, if you actually stopped her or not and united everyone. If you fail, wait, wait. we're gonna nuke the planet. Oh. Why? No need, but why do they do this? Why don't they just come down and kill her themselves? They made her immortal. Can't they kill her? Bro, I don't know. They, they just <laughs> tell this guy. They just tell this so guy. There's, so, there's, so there's Anson Seeker of Darkness, right? But he's, his real identity is actually... <laughs> Okay, but here's what, but here's the oh, weirder part. And then there's okay, the here's... real Ansem, who he stole his name from, and he like, okay, yeah, but, but like fate. Fate okay, is okay, right gets... in between this and Kingdom Hearts in terms. Okay, of it yeah. gets yeah. real quirky though. I want remember how she's how like much evil... longer, unironically. <laughs> no, no, unironically, like five minutes. Uh, okay. Remember how she's like evil and wants to kill everyone? They just forget about this because they revive him. He basically dies and just basically like. Uh, Mind controls the next person. It's just sort of like a hive mind. It just takes over the next guy. Mm. 
Eliezer would in whatever not have time. put up with this. No, yeah, okay. he would not have. Okay, so he beelines it to meet his wife in the woods. How does she know where she is? No idea. He just like happens to meet her, like first try, like on the first fucking day, he finds oh. her, and and Good he's job. like, hey, and and he's like, hey, I revived, and she's like, wow, I want to fuck you, and then they just yeah. fuck and make a kingdom, and they like, and everyone is peaceful, and they work together. So like, what's happened to this whole she needs to destroy the world business? Mm. No one knows. <laughs> But then, in the biggest twist of all time, they have four children, and the okay. four children are the maidens. So, like him, her, and the and these four children are the only one who can use quote unquote real magic, even though it's okay. no different than anything else in this world. And she, yeah. si- okay, she just sits down and she's like, "Hey, bro, like you know, we need to rule the world, you know. Like, I just like mm-hmm. wants to do this." Yeah. But then. But then the writers at this point uh, remember, oh, she's supposed to be the villain. So how would we make her the villain? She would just suggest eugenics. Mm, we're just gonna kill course. everyone, and like you know, we're just like gonna rule everyone. But like you know, uh, we're gonna like start our own dynasty so we can you know restore magic to the world. For whatever reason, she just does this randomly. Like she never like brings it up or discusses it. She's just like, hey, we need to do this, and it's like. Okay, you see, the gods told me you're evil and I need to, like, mm. defeat you and unite mm. the world. Right, and she's right. like, what? And he's like, yes. And then they fight. And she kills him. And this, like, happens in, like, the span of an hour. Oh. <laughs> like, for... <laughs> the disagreement and the reason for it is unclear. Like, why did they fight? <laughs> no one knows. Mm. So she kills him. And the rest of the show is him basically reviving, trying to do something about her, and then failing. And she just, like, wants to destroy the world. Except, this was, like, a thousand years ago. And no progress has been made on this goal of, quote-unquote, destroying the world. She's, like, chilling in a castle. Until season six, where she actually does something. Well, no need, but this Ozpin guy sounds like a real interesting main character. Oh, did I mention he's just the mentor character? He has, like, one episode, which is this backstory episode. That's it. Mm. Oh. Yeah, the, the rest of the six seasons is about other people. Yeah, it's about yeah, the like, girls. Like, and, uh, yeah. We don't learn this backstory until season six. So you, you know see, the main the part last... of the show? Yeah, yeah. the main the part of the show. <laughs> yes. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, <laughs> so okay, I guess I was guys... right in not care in not giving a shit about Rooster Teeth ever. Good no, to know. Yes. No, Blue is fucking. No, babe. I guess I was right no, no, the fuck, whole time. Fuck, 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 The monkey people. Yes, I forgot. <laughs> at some point, <laughs> oh, Jesus. at some oh, point, people. people did fuck animals and they became the faunus. And humans are racist against the faunus. Right, like, and, like, uh, like, like Blake. Cat girls, literally cat girls. Literally yeah. cat girls. <laughs> For whatever reason, they're uh, just racist. Ag- okay, they're just racist Sean, against animal people. At this part, at this part, slip in that Louis C.K. clip. It was like, why aren't you fucking the animals? I made these animals for you. <laughs> Gotta link it. <laughs> I will. Okay. Uh, You're the eating animal, them? The actual oh. plot. Okay, what I just <laughs> described is the actual plot of Ruby, according to the writers. But you see, the first five seasons are about racism against these animal people. Mm -hmm. That's it. So they just, like, spend the first five seasons... uh, Basically, the animal people are being oppressed, but then they have... Like, they... they, The show admits that they are being oppressed and, like, like systematically and uh, on a personal level. They are being fucked over all the time. Yeah. But they're also the bad guys, so shut up. Oh. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they are the bad guys and they go to jail and they are terrorists. And they are the only characters who actually kill people. Like the good guys only kill one terrorist, which he, he is a creepy, weird boyfriend. Stalker oh. type. Okay. In season one, we meet this guy named Adam. And Adam is a faunus and he's a terrorist and he wants to kill people. In season yeah. three, his ex girlfriend was Blake Belladonna. Which is one oh. of the main characters. She's the cat girl, and he yeah, wants she's to. The, she's the black one. Yeah, she's the black one. She's literally Blake, black. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he wants to kill her, and, and like torture her, whatever. But then in season four, he just switches all motivations. 
actually he wants to fuck her because he's a creepy mm. ex-boyfriend. He was like... A, well, you a, know, it's in similar spots on the brain. You know, It's easy to... Yeah, uh, you know. No, no, actually, because the first three seasons are about how he's like a leader who wants like freedom for his people. Oh. But then they just remember that he's the bad guy again. So they turned him into the villain. So they just like her and her gay girlfriend kill him using his own sword. Then they throw him on top of a fucking waterfall. Who's her gay girlfriend? Ye- yellow Yang. The, la- yep. the yellow one. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. Cool. Hey, you guys. Um, I think it's officially time we stop using the word cope. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I'd, I'd <laughs> right. like you to direct your gaze to what I just posted. Sprite, uh-huh. the soda company, has just released an ad uh, saying it, it is coping season. Um, <laughs> find your... <laughs> Find your coping oh. playlist. Uh, yeah, I didn't get oh, wow. Or your, your 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 2020 anthem. Yeah, that's pretty oh, bad. God. Uh, yeah. Cope. <laughs> coping season. Oh, God. <laughs> I fuck, 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 fuck. The main detail, the main detail. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Oh, my uh, God. Okay. No okay, 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 okay. This is the last thing. This is the last thing. I swear. Christ. I swear, guys. I swear. The main I don't believe you, has... but say it. Okay, the main character has super special eyes, which like basically they laser these grim creatures. They turn them into stone or vaporize them. It's unclear. It's still unclear which one is it. Does it turn them into stone or does it kill them? No one knows yet. It's eight seasons. Okay. <laughs> you see her power is not magic and it's not semblance and it's not somehow dust or whatever. It's just a super duper special power because apparently at some point God dissented and fucked the monkey and they inherited mm, his super yes. powerful genes to, to have this like silver eye power. Oh, so it's genetics. I see. No, yeah, it's, remember yeah, we said eugenics was bad. It's actually really good. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> Ruby is the only one who can actually defeat the main bad guy because she's the God. only one who can either... Sick. Vaporize or stone her to death. <laughs> oh, whichever we, it may, whichever it turns out to be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We know about the silver eyes in season one. We actually don't know what they do until season seven. Yes, in season one, there's a one line in the first episode that the, the, the Ozpin guy says, "You have silver eyes," and that's it for seven seasons. Wow. Wow. Uh-huh. But remember, it's not magic, a nor show. dust, nor a semblance. <laughs> it's an entirely a different thing, uh, yeah, this, this could have been gr- this conversation could have been greatly expedited by, by just saying Correct. You know, bad. <laughs> you need Ruby. to understand uh, why it's bad. Uh, oh no, I w- I think we understood why we? it was bad from by the time we were done describing why the new seasons of Red versus Blue were bad. <laughs> you know. I mean, not to say this wasn't entertaining, just... Uh, <laughs> All right, we're going down the list. Oh, yeah. Simon, what do no, you want to rant about between us? I was going to... No, I was going <laughs> to say... I was going to... Um, yeah. I was going to take this fucking piece Bullshit. of... Bullshit. I was going to take this and spread it wide open. Yeah. When, when you were talking about the, the bullshit powers and the... And the, she has lightning, and you're like, you have lightning. Do you remember... Have any of you seen uh, Code Geass? Yes. No. Yeah. Do you remember? No. <laughs> like, it's like a solid, it's like, you know, sci fi all the way until they're like, oh, yeah, what is the origin of the Gias? Like, where did you get, what's your deal, uh, C2? It's like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm like a witch from the, from the 15th century because oh. witches were real. I was like, are you fucking shitting me? Oh. Right now, see, so just, I think I think sci-fi combined. Yeah, with fan- I was gonna fancy ask. What do you guys cool, think? What do you guys it's just think that it's not important yeah, in any genre, other way except for explaining who like she is. Like a bunch of space like warriors in a canyon, met a ghost. What do you? Th- yeah, what do you that think really of genre barriers and like, like, like supernatural fantasy sci-fi? Or, or, or like introducing the element that the Gias can like go rogue against your control, but really only oh, yeah. using that mechanic once at the most convenient time to use yeah. it yeah, I know. for I, like I a big plot video. event. The gay ass. Yeah, or yeah, you know, there or or, or perhaps I have to kill you know, all the Japanese. 
I mean that yeah that is on its own is exceptionally stupid. Uh, oh my god! But it, but then but then it but then it does shit like that in, in circles for I know it's like Kogias is like fifty episodes long just the regular show. There's yeah. and there's spinoff seasons too and like there alternate are, universe seasons that. of Code Geass. Like I don't know about that, but okay. It's yeah, it's a nightmare. I've seen only the main. And there, and every time, every time I fucking bring shit like that up, there are people who come, who come in like, no, 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 I promise it's good. And they can never fucking explain, like, nobody, nobody can give, like, actual good reasons why Code Geass should stand on its own as a good show. Or like... I like the ending. Uh, huh? I like, I remember liking You like the, the ending? ending? <laughs> the way oh, it ended? The, uh... <sighs> What you mean with, with him uh, killing? How did? The, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Now I now yeah. I remember. I mean, like, like the literal like. You know what I'm talking about. What like instead of you know instead of so he so he he abandoned you know abandons all his uh, beliefs through the show and then just decides he, to he literally be good again. He, want, he yeah, it was like he want he like one eighties and then they kill him and it's like a like it but it's like a ceremonial like first show like, like he sets it up keep to the be piece. killed like, like someone like... else dresses up as zero and then kills I... him like he becomes the big evil. I don't and think then, like, I really don't think that's good either like, and, then and that, he does that, the whole he says the whole like I did it I I destroyed the world and then saved it or whatever the fuck but oh yeah but God. then I get like going on and out about code Geass can we talk about something else you please so <laughs> when they made Avatar the last airbender right no, when they when they no, made the show no, 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 okay, the thing, okay 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 Joe meaning. Joe okay. totally stole this We're, election I, I swear <laughs> to God. no oh. Sean, Sean, just, okay Sean just okay. let let Here's what let, we're let do. No, it was a shadow the, in the immortal in the immortal out. words of G- Papa G- John GW and the other AI the, 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 <laughs> the other AI stay church, tuned to Leonard the day of Red was reckoning blue. is coming Leonard Church from Metal Gear Solid 2 so, Oh my god oh, big oh. shout outs Ah! No, I'm gonna breath. fucking say it, Sean. <laughs> okay, okay, stop. Come okay, on. so there is no, this one what? AI character what? who dies what? in season 3 of Ruby. Okay, no. people in the fandom were like, hey, no. guys. Okay, oh. they, they were no. like, hey, guys, she's just with AI. You just upload her into another body. Then the writers and the actual characters in the next season were like, oh, my God, she was a real human with soul. Five seasons later, uh. she shows up, and she's like, hey, how are you alive? And she's like, oh, I'm just a robot, dude. I just uploaded my data, woo-woo. And I'm like... Ah! <laughs> are you Sean. done? Are you Sean. done? Sean, just take over. Mm. Just take All over. right. If I, I, I have not got a chance to say jack <laughs> shit in the last like you hour. Talked, you talked so about the PS5 um, or something. <laughs> like an hour, over an hour ago. You had your, Sean, yeah, you had what your are you saying? You Sean, say it. Sean. Shout outs to, I did something inspiring. I just want to ground the conversation with something not autistic. Shout out to Man Mode. I finally watched <laughs> the point of SSSS Gridman. That is a uh, great video. It is mm. so fucking Kino. Uh, yeah, we should probably we should probably wrap this bitch up by the way. Man Mode Sean, is that is inherent. Fucking no, Sean, autistic that is inherently weirdo. autistic because it's about anime. It's Has this podcast video. evolved that we're just talking about YouTube videos now? <laughs> <laughs> Again, we're back we're back to Sean, it. Oh boy. Sean, that video was good, but he's actually dumb. Yo, guys, have you seen Smosh Food Wars? <laughs> Dude, have you seen Lunchtime with Smosh? My favorite YouTube series? Here's yes, the thing yes, about yes. I, fu- I watch truck. every it episode. It starts with F and it ends with Uck. <laughs> but when you bring, but when you bring the magic system into a contemporary setting, it really doesn't m- make any sense. <laughs> Simon, there is Soul Resurrection in the show too. Yeah. Yeah, but that's well. not that's not one of no. This is fifth new thing. <laughs> No need, bro. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't care. I know, Simon. This is makes it even funnier. I, care. I like. Teeth. I love shitting on uh, Rooster Teeth. I'm into shitting on Rooster Teeth, but I have things to do tonight. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, stop shitting and start shitting. Like, like, the, 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 like having that whole conversation about Ruby doesn't serve to shit on Rooster Teeth. It just serves that to to show that you wasted that much of your life watching Ruby. 
Uh, yeah, like <laughs> I think it was worth it for this podcast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Uh, it's yeah. it's great, great entertainment. I just you know the the it's it's like proportional. The the more time you spend talking shit about Ruby, the more your own respect meter goes down. You know, it's like okay, but my name is No Need Grado. Rido. Do you have you're, even you're any respect for point. me? <laughs> Well, I, you know, I was starting to get a little respect back, but you, you, you dropped the ball. Dropped the ball. Maybe next time. Maybe yeah. next time, sport. Okay, Sean. Right. So, Mad Mod is an actual retard. Why? Why? Dude, that video is the rawest thing I have ever seen in my life. <laughs> what are you? Oh, wait, wait, wait. I don't what? think. I don't think that video is. I mean, that is just. I mean, it is just his opinion, but it is also. Uh, it's not a complete objective analysis of Gridman. I mean, oh my god, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't, it doesn't make Gridman like analysis. I don't think it's the man mode that. perspective makes Gridman a great show. Yeah, I, yeah. I think I, I think at best it's still like a six out of ten. Mm, it's not an objective analysis, therefore. Uh, mm, no, 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 no. Um, well, no, it doesn't have to be an objective okay, analysis. Simon. It's just like it is just his perspective on the show and doesn't really make any of the aspects about the show better <laughs> by having or worse. Simon, are you stopping? No, Sean, okay, you just Simon. you just listened to some YouTuber Literally. talk about an anime and you had your mind blown because you couldn't comprehend that when watching Wrong, the show. Gay, Jewish, that's just your opinion. No, man. no. Literally, okay, we need, he starts, we need to wrap this bitch no, up. He starts, this, he starts the video <laughs> with saying it's a four, but then, oh my God, Gridman is a 10 out of 10. I'm like, dude, you are retarded. No, he, no. No, no. Did you did you even fucking watch the video? Yes, I watched it. Started it started at dropped. three and went to eight. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god, Sean, I'm gonna shoot you. Sean Sean hey. hangs on, on YouTubers' <coughs> words a lot, you know. He's still he's, he's still oh. sucking at the oh, teeth you know, the best for guy ever. Oh wait, 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 no, 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 no. Oh, no, we're god. not done. I've got oh, it. Oh my god. I've got it's it. Red versus red. It's my it's my turn. And like I I've blue. got a I've got a, an analogy to use as a vessel to unload my autism. Okay. Yeah. So so you remember how I said I made a backup? Uh, I was gonna make a backup of this Discord server in case something happened. Because <laughs> I was worried that uh, like Dunes uh uh, <laughs> uh drunken uh tomfoolery. <laughs> He would, uh, he would just like tear the walls down and like, yes, get turn to it point. all to ash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I named it, I named it Camelot slash Jerusalem. Oh, what? Because Why? in no, yeah, no, because in in Fate Grand Order. Oh God! In, when yeah. they go I, to, I, 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 I don't so, want to ask. I don't want to So like anymore. a Holy Grail goes back in time, and then so the the so the Crusaders. The Crusaders get a hold of the Holy Grail, so they win. So they make the round, the Knights of the Round Table and Camelot in Jerusalem. Whoa. Okay, yeah. but 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 and for then, the most part, the Holy Grail is okay. never real in these shows. It's always a fake. Oh my god! Oh my god! I don't yeah. care about fate. No, I have other the... things to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, Simon, no, so the analogy Simon. is the, like uh, so like so like so they take over. Royale. Who can survive the longest? So they take over. No, so Camelot is in Jerusalem, and they keep all of the like Muslim refugees out, and then they also have like like uh, Ozzy Mandius is there, and he makes Egypt in the east with like the pyramids and everything so like there are three factions but then uh they know that like the world's gonna end because um fucking the demon gods the demon god hive mind getia is gonna go back to the beginning of humanity and like just restart it all to like fix humanity but like so so king arthur who is artoria who's a woman uh like before in this timeline before she dies Instead of um, instead of dying, she she gets a hold of the spear, her holy spear, w uh, called Rongo Miniad, which possesses mm. her, which and uh, she becomes the vessel for a time traveling goddess, who knows that the world's gonna end, and then it takes over her body. And because she's become a different person, because this goddess has taken over her, her tits get way bigger, and her and she looks kind of different. So then she's and like, no, no 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 so she's like the world's gonna end right so I'm just gonna we made this tower to keep everyone safe so we'll select whoever is worthy and keep them safe in there and all the rest of y'all can just burn 
And uh, okay. that's, why, that's why I named the backup server Camelot slash Jerusalem. In the, so, uh, spirits and Avatar were, like, supposed to be these or, sort of, like, Japanese mythology... Like, like you know, the whole show's based off, jelly. like, Eastern... <laughs> jelly, no, we're, we're recording, so don't... Actually yeah, don't actually, no, actually no, this is perfect. We need Jelly to merger this podcast right now. No, Put Craig in is in here. Group. Jelly, please, Je- kill, je- us, kill jelly, us, kill jelly, us! Jelly, get rid of Craig. <laughs> no, <laughs> get him out of here. Actually, don't give wait, him a just, yeah, yeah. Jelly, just turn on <laughs> Audacity, and then just, like... <laughs> Thank you. Abort. Thank you. Well, that that scream, sing, the harb the harbinger of the end times, is spoken. Yeah, that's our. Gong. Thanks for joining us on today's and, episode. And that's Pro why Act Six of Homestuck is Anonymous. the worst spot of the. Thanks comic. for joining us. Hey, today was our 200 subscriber special. Thank you, everybody who subscribed to us. Oh, it's, it's also Thank our one you. subscriber special. Yeah, because we never did one. End the podcast. We're going by. Say everybody. Say bye. 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 Supposed to Bye. Be yeah. Yeah. Oh. I'm supposed to be working right now. I'm supposed to be working right now. But I'm not working. I'm doing nothing. My dick, I'm jerking. Myself, I'm sucking. I am an asshole. I am a stupid. I've got a deadline. Don't want to do it. What the hell is wrong with me?